to be in the best rock and roll band on late night television? Uh, employed. I feel like I'm, I'm blessed. Uh, I have the best boss with Conan who loves to, he doesn't, he doesn't, um, he won't do a rehearsal without a strat around his neck. He just plays guitar all day. I really think he has the show just so he can play guitar every day during rehearsal. So we've been at it like 23, we're in our 23rd season now, so yeah. What goes on in between the, uh, the commercial breaks we that play. the crowd doesn't we see? Play. You have to come over sometime. What does Conan uh, do with the band on commercial breaks? Uh, he comes over and messes with us sometimes. But I mean, for the most part, we, we, we don't stop. We play right through. So the show never stops. You know, some shows will stop and then they'll just, people will be sitting there quiet. But we just really entertain, you know, entertain the troops as it is. What do you think about the other bands on late night television? I think they're all lucky to be working too. In, this, in, the, in the kind of a world that we're living in now, it used to be a common thing. There's only a couple of gigs now. There's, uh, you know, there's a million great players and like four gigs. You know? And sometimes it's, it's all about uh, time and place, you know? I mean, we know, that, we know from being in a place like Nam, there's so many people that I see playing and I go, man, I'm glad I have a job. Because <laughs> if I had to be out competing with some of these young players, I would be, you know. What's, what's the New Jersey influence in your band? What, what the, the whole band's from lived in Jersey at one point or another. You know, it's a whole Springsteen, uh, uh, South Jersey connection. Philly, South Jersey, North Jersey. Uh, we worked, we all worked in bars seven nights a week when we got out of high school. So, uh, you know, we were making pretty good money. So we figured, hey, you can survive, you could survive as a musician at the time. Uh, it's the world, the, the, the world is changing a lot, but there's YouTube stars now. I go sometimes to YouTube to see how a kid plays something. People have figured everything out now and, they're sh and we're sharing it. So there's a good thing happening. Yeah. Um, I've been, I, I started as an arranger before I even picked up the guitar. I was a trumpet player. So it's always been natural for me to write. I'm, I still write by hand though. I don't know how to do anything on a computer. Uh, I, even have, I even have like an address book that I write in. So. Uh, it's too late to change, and it's worked so far. As my good friend Mark Shaman, who's a, uh, a compo film composer, said, one day we're going to get caught. <laughs> yeah. One other question. How do you think the, the music, late night music scene has changed, specifically the content, the, the music that they're making? It's a far cry from Doc Severinsen. I think now it's up to the band, each band individually decide what they want to play. You know, what Doc was playing in his day were, were the hits from the 50s and 60s, you know, and, and they were doing their, what you would call, it's akin to smooth jazz, what they were doing. Like we heard Everybody uh, Rules the World played just recently over here by some guitar player, just playing it like, you know, it's, it's almost a smooth jazz version. But the same thing applied for what Doc's instrumental versions of hits. They were playing Beatles songs, they were playing you know, Jimmy Webb songs, as well as uh, jazz standards. So it was always about, uh, you know, the music fitting the band, you know. So we can't afford to have 15-piece bands, but I would have one in a minute if I had, them, you know, that kind of budget. Budgets have changed. That's changed. And really, Paul Schaefer and, the, and his quartet, the world's most dangerous band, the first, they changed it. They, brought, they made it rock and roll instead of jazz. So that's, I'm uh, uh, always indebted to Paul for that. He's uh, my mentor. What kind of connection do you have with Paul's band? What kind of, what? What kind of connection, relationship? Paul is my mentor in the, in the business. You know, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if not for Paul. You know, we met when he was very busy and I was doing some work and helping him do stuff and he was helping me do some arrangements and stuff, working in situations. And we got along to be great friends, so much so that we knew we couldn't work together. We had to have two separate bands. He always said, you know, I, I always know you wanted to be in my band when Hiram left, and when, but I knew that you had to be a band leader and the two of us could never be in the same band. So he was like a teacher, of my, he's my Yoda. He really is. Quick dangerous question. After your band, who do you think is the best late night band? The next one. <laughs> the one that's not even there yet. The kids that are gonna get the next gig. That's what I think. I think we're all about unequal footing right now. Uh, even though we've been doing it longer than anybody, we still love each other. We're like family, and 
we, we keep it fresh every day, and we have a great time. Would you have a word for old Uncle Floyd show fans? What about Uncle yeah, Floyd? What, what, what's Floyd up to these days? Floyd is uh, a morning David Bowie. Love David Bowie. David Bowie was a friend of Floyd's, you know. And David wrote a song for Floyd. Yeah, Twinkle, Twinkle, Uncle Floyd. And he one time sat me and my brother Jerry down and, uh, and, and played it for us, you know, because they... And so, the Floyd's uh, in Jersey. He will not leave New Jersey ever. And he, uh, you know... He's uh, got an Italian radio show in New York, and he's also got a YouTube show, I think, or YouTube, or I know he's got a, uh, what do you call it, a stream, a podcast kind of a thing. Yeah. So, you know, he's always, always busy, you know, and, and he stepped up now into maybe the 1970s. <laughs> what happens to your band when Springsteen or Southside Johnny... When he what? What happens to your band when Springsteen or Southside Johnny call Mark or La Bamba? Uh, they don't go anymore. <laughs> they stay in California. Yeah. Uh, they they didn't. It was really pretty much a Max issue because that was his gig. You know. Uh, once they started doing this, that's when other guys started doing the horns. The horns were. Uh, but they will go go sit in all the time. It's, uh, the door is always open. You know to sit in if you if you go if you meet up when even with. We're all still friends, all of us, you know, and uh, I'm glad to see them out touring again, really happy. And The River is my favorite record. That's the exile on Main Street of the E Street Band. I will. I will. This is, has nothing to do with your side, but i got to ask you this. John Sebastian, you ever going to be able to get him out of retirement? We, uh, we do stuff all the time together. Yeah. Well, the Bands, I yeah. Show. Oh, wow. I love Chris. I love Chris. What he wants. <laughs> well, you know, um, the industry's changed so much that him and uh, him and Dog, uh, uh, David Chrisman, go out together as a duo. In case you catch that. Yeah. It's a smoky backstage room. Thank you so much. I just had to ask you that.